Beautiful California evening as we come back to Dodger Stadium. One nothing Los Angeles. On a James Loney homer. Now it's the fifth inning and Raul Ibanez is the batter and another first pitch strike from young Clayton Kershaw. Both of these starters have really gotten into a rhythm now. We're in the middle innings. Cole Hamels has certainly located his pitches very effectively and Clayton Kershaw for a little bit of a hiccup last inning has gotten ahead again. Cole Hamels just doesn't waver. But he needs some offensive help now with the lower portion of the Philly batting order up. And a line drive into left field will drop in front of Manny Ramirez, a leadoff single for Raul Ibanez. Danny Ozark's Phillies team with Larry Bull playing shortstop for them at that time. But this Phillies run recently, certainly one that they can take an awful lot of pride in, but they're all about getting back to the World Series. Well, in some ways, I think Charlie Manuel did a better job of managing this season than he did last year when everything kind of went perfectly in the bullpen. Certainly didn't this season. That's a little bit low to Pedro Feliz, a ball and a strike. They had to move in Cliff Lee, of course, and so look at Sammy Palazzo with the signs. Moyer, the veteran, they had to move out. He won 12 games this year. They had to deal with the injuries to Raul Ibanez. He missed almost a month. Jimmy Rollins had a June swoon. As that ball bounces up there and Martin can't get it. And Ibanez will move up 90 feet. Let's see if Russell's all right. The Phillies are terrific anticipating balls in the dirt, especially with Kershaw throwing that big breaking ball. Russell Martin tries to square up on this ball, but you see the trajectory way in front of home plate, and Ibanez read it perfectly. No matter how close it is to the catcher, he gets such a great break at first, he's going to take the extra 90 feet. And the great part about it is, is that Ibanez, veteran, knows how to make that move, but also the first base coach, Davey Lopes, so great at reminding his players, expect one in the dirt. Score that a wild pitch. Runner in scoring position. Nobody out this time for Feliz, who's ahead in the count. Perlazzo keeping a close eye on the middle infielders with Ibanez in scoring position. Two on, nobody out. One ball, no strikes. You know the Dodgers will trade Ibanez to third for a double play ball here if they can get it on the ground. Can't get a double play ball if you don't throw a strike. He's walked three. He's allowed two hits. And again, revisiting what Craig said at the start of the game, Jimmy Rollins was hoping to be patient. Let's see if Ruiz can be ahead in the count 2 0. Oh. Foul straight back. The only reason he had the green light to swing there is because the pitcher's on deck. Take your shot, give him an opportunity to turn the bat loose. Uh, what good does it do to get the bases loaded with the pitcher hitting? And people at home would be saying, well, that might have been ball three, but it was close enough to hit. Give the hitter a chance yeah. to drive in some runs. Yeah. Give him the green light and let him take advantage of a good count. It's still in Ruiz's favor now. Two balls and a strike. Driven down the left field line and deep and gone. The Phillies secret weapon strikes again. Carlos Ruiz a three run homer and the Phillies have the lead. Well Kershaw lost with his command and everything was up in the strike zone. 
two consecutive fastballs up. He missed the first one on the 2-0 count. He didn't miss that one on the 2-1 count. Uh, Charlie Manuel, the manager, thinks like a hitter. He says, hey, 2-0, turning loose. I got the pitcher standing on deck. And the Phillies, with 224 regular season home runs, hit their first in this series with their number eight man, Carlos Ruiz, driving it into the many wood seats in left. Yeah, the ability to swing 2 and 0 freed up Ruiz and his mind. And even though that ball was up out of the zone, he jumped all over it. Well, sometimes what happens is if you miss a fastball 2 0 and you're a little late. Then you speed up that bat for the 2 1 count, and certainly Ruiz did that. Yeah, you can cheat to the fastball in that count because the pitcher's on deck and he doesn't want to walk you. He's coming at you. This guy gets big hits. He does. And Kershaw's really rattled. A single, a walk, a homer, now 3 0 to Cole Hamels. Well, if you watch the tempo, and I'm sure Rick Honeycutt and Joe Torre are. The tempo of Kershaw has sped up the last couple of innings. When he gets in trouble, he can't wait to get that baseball and throw it back to the plate again instead of taking his time and taking his time with his delivery like he did earlier. And he walks Hamels. As a runner at first, nobody out now trails by a 3 1 score. And now you're looking at Rollins, Victorino, and Utley. One ball, no strikes. Well, he's had a couple visits from his catcher, a visit from his pitching coach, a visit now from the shortstop Rafael for a call, as they're all doing, trying to delay, get the pitcher in the bullpen some time to get loose, but also trying to help this young man get through this inning. Yeah, and again, just a little encouragement from the shortstop. Scott Elbert is loosening up. He was added to the Dodgers roster for this round. He was not on the division series roster that gives him three left-handers in the bullpen. Ball got him back into the at bat. Two balls and a strike. That one awfully close. How long do you wait? And this was a conversation we had with Joe Torre on the final Saturday of this regular season. Joe Torre said, Buck, the sixth inning with the pitcher coming up is oftentimes the most difficult inning to manage because how long do you stick with your starting pitcher? Well, that dilemma has come one inning earlier yeah, in tonight's I, game one. In the postseason, obviously, you don't have the luxury to say, well, we'll make up the ground. You only got seven games to deal with. And they have home field advantage, but that evaporates with a loss. High hopper hit toward Casey Blake. He'll go to second. Close play. And that'll retire Cole Hamels for out number one in the fifth. Here's Victorino. And he takes called strike. Major League Baseball puts out a press release before the start of each one of these NLCS games. Real statistical oddity. The team with a home field advantage in the NLCS has lost the series in five of the last seven years. And as you guys mentioned, the Phillies trying to wrest home field advantage right back after game one tonight. Well, you think that would have been a good, big advantage for Joe Torre's team. They won their first 13 out of the gate here, 17 out of their first 20. But the Phillies are a great road team. Yeah, they tied the Angels with the best road record. 48 and 33 on the road that kind of negates the Dodgers record at home and you have home field advantage until you lose the game at home. <laughs> <laughs> now Joe Torre has got a lot of experience in these situations 14 straight years to the postseason. That's the run defense strategy that's the signs that Russell Martin takes from Torrey. 
And a long fly ball foul by Shane Victorino. 14 straight trips. You mentioned Buck for Joe Toy to the postseason. That ties him with Bobby Cox of the Braves for the most postseason appearances by a manager in baseball history. Torrey with 83 postseason wins. That's most in history as well. But he's down by a couple of runs. And an 0 2 pitch swung on and missed. That bounces away from Martin. And uh, Victorino is called out. Now, Victorino is out because first base was occupied, and Jimmy Rollins moves up on the wild pitch. Here's Chase Utley. That one pops away from Martin, and Rollins will move up to third. We talk about good base runners. It doesn't really limit it to base stealers. Jimmy Rollins moves up on the ball in the dirt. The third wild pitch tonight, another curveball. Martin just never gets his body squared up in front of that ball in the dirt, and Rollins anticipates that breaking ball and moves up on the short wild pitch. You make a great point, Buck. If you don't square up, it's just going to carry him away from you instead of staying in front. Yeah, and that breaking ball will bounce back toward you, but you've got to get your chest protector perpendicular to the ball and smother it. 1 and 0 oh to Utley, who rifled a ball to straightaway center his first time up. Matt Kemp tracked it down. And right now, Clayton Kershaw is a little reluctant to throw a breaking ball with Rollins at third base. Let's see if one comes here. 1 and 0. Oh. Check swing roller. He did a pretty good job of throwing a good one there. Well, he did. He made an adjustment, though. Instead of that big overhand curve, now he went to the slider yeah. with Rollins on third base. And that's the pitch Joe Torre told us he's added this year. You know what I uh, haven't seen from him, though, against the right handed hitters? He's never been able to get into his changeup, and that might have been a pitch that could have got him back, especially against Ruiz. Kershaw working out of the set position with two outs and Rollins at third base and Utley in the batter's box. Well, Kershaw's had a couple box this season. And I think when you have Rollins on third base and you're pitching out of the windup and you're a young pitcher, he's going to take a big run down that third base line, try to induce a box. So he stops it by going in the stretch. And Kershaw all over the place. Two walks. Three wild pitches in an inning. And that's the first time that has happened in League Championship Series history. For the young Dodger left-hander. And how much longer will Joe Torre stick with Kershaw here? Dangerous pitch. Three balls and a strike to Huntley. Still got a good fastball, but he hasn't been able to throw it in the strike zone. Those other fouls one back there. It's no surprise that the count is three and two among qualifiers this year. Kershaw had the highest percentage of full counts in the majors, almost well 17.3 percent. Full counts lead to high pitch counts and early exits. And Utley coaxes ball four. It's the fifth walk of the game. And two are on. And two are out. And Ryan Howard comes up. He's the eighth Philly to hit in the inning. Ball one. Well, this is an interesting move by Joe Torre. It's almost like a grown up grow up moment for Mr. Kershaw. See how he can handle the situation with two outs and Ryan Howard up. It's a two run game. You get out of this inning and you're well within striking distance and that shows you the confidence that Joe Torrey has in Clayton Kershaw. Driven into the right field corner and that's big time trouble. 
Rollins scores. Utley around third. They're going to wave him. Here's the throw to the plate. Not in time. And Ryan Howard, like he did against the Rockies, hits a rocket into the right field corner, and it's 5-1 to one Philadelphia. Well, Troncoso and Martin are going to go over some signs. Ramon Troncoso, in a year that the Dodger bullpen was used early and often, he did most of that work. 82 and two-thirds innings pitch. That was second in the National League to Milwaukee's Todd Coffey. So Troncoso versus Worth. Ryan Howard with a ringing double plates a pair of Philadelphia runners and with those two RBIs he takes over the all time Phillies postseason RBI lead passing Mike Schmidt. Uh, he's become a big run producer in key situations as we have seen every time he gets an opportunity in this postseason he's delivered. And that's five straight games down the postseason with an RBI. Now teams had horses and Ryan Howard is one of them and you can see his postseason record pretty impressive. And he came up and obviously the ability to drive in runs and everybody's going over him in their meetings everybody's trying to find weaknesses they got the ball down and that's in his wheelhouse. A high fly ball off the bat of Jason Worth into shallow left for call and Ramirez it'll be. Manny Ramirez, two very big weapons for the Phillies. Strike in the fifth. Carlos Ruiz, a three run homer. And then the not so secret weapon, Ryan Howard, a double into the right field corner. A five run Philly fifth inning.